Hi, I'm Dave Baring, Technical Director here at TriStar, and welcome to another Tech Talk. I'm in the lab today to uh, address an issue that has recently been talked about in one of our blogs, but it's an issue that comes up quite frequently, and that is, what is the shelf life of Rulon or PTFE in general? The quick answer to that is there's really no shelf life. Um, these materials are inert to all the environmental things that would normally damage plastics, chemicals, ozone, UV, things like that. And because the PTFE component is really not susceptible to those types of failure modes, uh, we can safely say that you can put these things on the shelf and leave them there forever. Now that said, there are certain uh, military specs, the old AN and MS specs, uh, some of the old OEM manufacturers um, of military equipment, aircraft, they will put in their own specifications a quarter maximum, 12 quarters, 24 quarters, whatever that may be. But the reality is that this material can sit on the shelf indefinitely and really not be affected. Now, that said, I want to talk about another part of Rulon's and PTFE in general, and that is if the product is etched, what is the life expectancy of that? And that gets a little bit more uh, difficult to pin down because it kind of depends a lot on the storage techniques and what you're doing with the material, how long it needs to be on the shelf. But the bottom line is the etch is really the more critical thing if you have parts made out of floor polymers and you want to know how long they're going to sit on the shelf. So I want to talk specifically about the etch. The, the generally accepted rule is that after about a year of sitting on the shelf from the time that you receive the material, you should really start now to look at it and decide whether or not it's good. So I'm going to show you a couple of quick, easy tricks on determining whether or not the material is, is uh, still bondable. Now what we want to show you first is what the material looks like with a proper etch. Now you can see I have a couple of different materials here. Uh, this is Rulon 142. They are identical looking on that side. But if you flip them over and look closely, you'll see that one is obviously darker than the other. The eye would say this etch is a better etch. This is all marbled. But that's not necessarily true. Let me explain the etching process too real quickly so you understand that. Teflon doesn't stick to anything. That's why we have slippery pots and pans. That's why we have sprays that go on and stop squeaks in cars. That's because the fluorine part of fluorocarbon is what makes Teflon slippery. So in order to bond it to anything, you have to get rid of that fluorine. And that is done by an etching process where we use either sodium naphthalene or sodium ammonia. Those are the two principal etching fluids that we use. That basically leaves behind that carbon backbone and now you're able to bond it to any substrate. So the best way to check and see which side is bondable first, uh, that's especially true if you have a piece of black material that's been etched and you don't know how to determine which side is the bonding side. The simplest way to do it is just with some water. Give you an example here. This material here is an old, old piece of virgin Teflon. You can see that it's got a very marble texture to it. And if I were doing the bonding, I would probably not use this. Not that it's necessarily bad, but it's obviously been sitting around for a long, long time. But it doesn't necessarily mean it doesn't work. Well, let me show you. If we put a little drop of water on this, you'll see that the water still kind of rolls around, uh, but it does wet out if you put your finger down on it. And that's really the best way to tell if the material is, uh, is still good for bonding. If it stands completely proud on the surface, like this, then you know you've got a situation where your your etch has gone bad on you and you better not try bonding it. The simple rule is if you put water on and it beads up, again if you look at this particular example this is beading up you can actually move the bead of water around the top of the surface then don't use it. 
but if you put that same droplet of water on the opposite side that in this case has the dark etch on it you'll see that the water wets out very nicely and that means that the surface tension is right for bonding. This can be done out in the field too. Um, there have been a number of occasions where I'll be at a customer's and they want to know if the etch is good. There doesn't happen to be a bottle of water around someplace, you just simply spit on it. I know it sounds crude, but it's a good, easy way to check and see if the bond is there, first of all, and if it's still good. So some simple little rules on, on determining whether or not the etch is good. Uh, and again, the, the big picture view here is the, the PTFE component, unlimited shelf life. The etch component, keep track of it, be careful with it. Um, it could sit there for years and you have no problems whatsoever. But again, in certain conditions, storage conditions, you might actually see that etch degrade. So do this simple wet test and it'll give you an answer. Thanks for watching, and I just want to give you a little bit of a heads up too. Coming very soon, we will have the most comprehensive plane bearing design guide I think that you'll find out there in the marketplace. And we invite you to check that out. It should be coming out in early July of 2015. And uh, we invite you to uh, take a look at that, and uh, please give us a call if you have any questions after reading that. Thanks again for watching. We appreciate you uh, being a part of our um, TriStar University uh, videos. And uh, thanks again to all of you who compliment me personally on uh, the presentations. I do appreciate it. Thanks a lot.